Do you want to know the one word that gives chills to doctoral students? That word is feedback. Look, I know a lot of y'all do not like to hear that word feedback because I get a lot of DMs. I get a lot of questions from doctoral students all over the world about feedback. I would say that questions around feedback are probably on the top three of the questions that we receive at Dunn Dissertation. And as a result, I want to give you all some insight in today's episode of From ABD to PhD show on how to navigate feedback and how to deal with inconsistent feedback when you get them from your committee members. Because this is probably the most common question that I'm getting from a doctoral student around what should I do when my committee members do not agree on what I should be doing with my project. And so on this episode, I want to give you insight, give you some strategy, and then you will have a now a, a template on how to address feedback through this process I'm going to share with you in today's episode. And I want to say thank you so much for watching from ABD to PhD show. I'm your host, Dr. Ramon Goings, founder of Dunn Dissertation. And at Dunn Dissertation, our goal is to help demystify the dissertation process so that you, the doctoral student, can write and defend your dissertation in record time. Today's episode of From ABD to PhD Show is sponsored by the Dunn Dissertation Velocity Coaching Program. The goal of our coaching program is to give you that hands-on support so that you have that community, so you have that feedback on your work, so you know how to get through this process and get through it quickly. So if you're someone who's looking for that additional support and you know you need help to get through this process because you haven't been able to do it on your own quite yet, and know you have the skill set to do it, and know you have the time, but just need that extra push and support, Make sure that you learn more about our program at www.velocitydissertation.com, or you can scan the QR code that is here on your screen. And so in today's episode from ABD PhD show, we are going to talk about how to handle inconsistent feedback on your dissertation. Look, we know that this thing happens all the time where you're getting inconsistent feedback. But one of the first things we have to consider when we're dealing with feedback is that we cannot, at least at this point in time, we cannot take feedback personally. And look, I know we want to take feedback personally because you've done all this writing. You've been spending hours and hours on this dissertation. You've foregone, foregone maybe ch your child's practices, you uh, family events. I had a client say, yeah, I told everybody I can't go to that cookout. I can't do this event because I have to write my dissertation. And then when you get this feedback, you're like, I can't stand these people. Look, I've been there. I get it. Feedback is terrible at times. It feels like that. And it's even worse when it's inconsistent. But what we have to do first in the mindset shift you're going to have to have if you want to be able to better deal with feedback is that you have to detach as best as you can. So not fully because we just know that's not going to happen. But you have to detach you your worth from the feedback that you're getting from the professor because sometimes what i see folks getting consumed with is that when they submit their work because they put so much pressure on that work to be perfect when they get the feedback back that's saying it might not be as good as you thought you take it as if the the professor saying you're not good and actually that's not the case what the professor is just saying is hey the work where it stands can be improved and if you're someone who's trying to be a scholar and someone who really wants to do this doctorate the right way, you should be thankful that someone's going to give you feedback. It's different when the feedback is vicious and with malintent, right? So there are scenarios that happen where uh, folks give feedback, professors give feedback, and it's just cruel and not, not necessary. We've seen it happen. That That's a whole separate situation. But when you're getting feedback to improve, you have to at least take a look and then really recognize that it's not a personal attack and critique on you. It's just about the work. It will make things a lot easier because trust me, when I was a doc student, even now as a professor, you know, writing for publication, doing all these things, I get feedback on work all the time. And you just have to develop this skin. It's just like a muscle, right? You have to exercise this muscle. And the more you exercise, the stronger you get. I would say it's the same thing with hearing and getting feedback on your work. You have to develop it. And what will end up happening is that once you develop this muscle, it will not feel as personal as it once did for you. So that is something that I think is really important that you want to consider when you're going to handle inconsistent feedback, because there are going to be a lot of times in this process where your chair may say one thing, your committee members say something very different, and you're going to have to you know, wrestle with that. So first things first, don't take it personally. Second, once you have gotten the feedback from whoever is sending you feedback, I want you to document and then categorize the feedback. So it's not important just to document it. I want you to categorize it. 
So this is the process I'm laying out for you because it's one thing to document what the feedback is, but once you start categorizing it, it becomes, it's almost like a, a turbo charge to your, your writing process. And here's why. When you're documenting what the feedback is, you just kind of write it down and then you deal with it. But once you start to categorize it, especially if you have two, you know, more than two, you know, two or more people reviewing your work, this is when, when it's really important to categorize because what I find is sometimes when I write, <clears throat> I may have a, a flaw or something that needs to be improved with my paper. Let's say, for instance, it's in a, my theoretical framework section. And let's say the feedback, for example, was that I did a good job explaining the theory, but I did connect it to my study, which is something I honestly see in a lot. A lot of people we give to our clients and just folks I see, sometimes there's a misconnection between uh, or disconnect between what your theory is and how you're going to connect it to your study. So like bringing those two together, that's a common piece of feedback. So let's say I got that feedback, but now I had three, you know, my chair and two other committee members. But when I recognized when I started to not only document what the feedback was and I categorized it, I started to say, oh, wow, all three um, people have the same type of feedback in the same area. So what does that do for you? That actually allows you to get through feedback much quicker and responding because now you can have one effort for, in this case of the example, I can go and add the connection between my theoretical framework and my study. Once I address that particular piece of feedback, that satisfies all three people, the chair and the two committee members. Now I get to hit check in my list of all those things and knock that part out. When you start to categorize, it becomes so much easier to see it. What you may recognize too is that you have a particular issue that stems throughout the paper. Let's say for instance, it's an APA or whatever your citation style is related issue. And you keep doing at all, we need to do something else. Let's just say for instance, but you recognize that you got that feedback in your intro, your lit review, and your methods chapters. Now you just know, all right, I'm going to spend one writing session going through the whole thing, just cleaning up for my you know, citation format. That checks off multiple boxes from all the people. This is how you have to deal with inconsistent feedback is that you have to document and you have to categorize it. Because what you'll start to see is that while you may feel like it's inconsistent, it might be around a particular area. So even in cases where, and this is where it becomes helpful for documentation purposes, is that there may be inconsistencies between the feedback that you're getting in a particular area. So let's say in my theoretical framework section, I get feedback that they want me to better connect my theory to the study. And I get feedback from someone else is that this theory doesn't work altogether. That's a conflict. Some people say it works. They want me to enhance. The other person says move it completely. Now, once you organize and categorize it, now you can have a conversation with someone and say, hey, how do y'all want me to deal with this and show them now once they see each other's feedback now it's no it's no time for you know you know it's time for no time for you to be the person to figure it out it's time for them to come to some agreement about what should happen but this is really important and something that you really must consider when you're dealing with inconsistent feedback so you have to document and categorize the feedback it's gonna be really important that you do this and this is something that in our velocity coaching program we actually provide a whole uh module develop uh, a whole lesson develop uh uh, attributing to this particular issue around feedback and we actually give a form on how and a strategy on how to address feedback how to write a reply back to the chair like everything we just do it for you um in terms of giving you the strategy on how to execute the plan and so if you're someone that needs that type of support you need the hand holding you want that more um hands-on approach to get into this process go ahead and scan a qr code or go to www.velocitydissertation.com to learn more about our program and how we can help you get you to the finish line and so when we're thinking about documenting and categorizing the feedback, that becomes important. Then once you do that, the next step that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to ask clarifying questions to your chair and committee. So remember that example I gave, right, where you are, you know, working on a document, you got feedback from your chair, you got feedback from the committee, and they don't necessarily agree completely on what you should do. And so it could be a little like, hmm, what do they want from me? Because I, I just, I'm just not getting, I'm just not understanding. And so in the case, let's take that theoretical framework uh, example. Let's say that you thought it was, you know, important to, you know, the one committee member, sorry, wanted you to focus on getting a new theory. And then your chair said, no, I want you just to connect your current theory to the study better. Now, once you have those two things, now you can present it to them and start asking clarifying questions. So one of the questions that you need to ask when you are getting inconsistent feedback is, 
hey, I noticed that Professor A wants me to do this. Professor B wants me to do this. Unfortunately, if I do one of these, I can't accomplish the other. How would you all suggest that I go about approaching this? When you ask that question, now it puts the onus on your chair and committee to figure themselves out and how they want to help you navigate the inconsistent feedback versus you you know, sitting and holding those questions in, trying to figure it out, you know, burning out, panicking, and then not doing anything about it. It's going to be really important to, <clears throat> excuse me, give yourself that, you know, extra guidance. So why don't you make sure that you ask those questions? And so it's going to be really important that you do that. And so for some of us, we have a lot of pride. Now it's not the time for pride. Y'all trying to get a doctorate. You don't got to worry about the pride. Your goal is to get the help that you need. So make sure you ask those questions. Again, you're, you're paying tuition. You know, this is stuff that as a chair and committee member, we want to help you with, we should be doing, and we want to give you that support. So please make sure that you're asking those clarifying questions so that, you know, your committee can help you get to the finish line. Because if you don't, what's going to start to happen is you're going to try to do things and you're not going to be sure how to approach it. And so when you go that route, it becomes really difficult because you just don't know what you don't know. And I find that your, your chair may decide, you know what, actually, I don't want you to do it like that. I actually want you to consider and do this slightly differently. Uh, but again, you don't know until you ask. And so again, when you're trying to deal with inconsistent feedback, remember that we're going to go back and I'm going to show you again, the three kind of steps and processes that you need to consider. First, don't take the feedback personally. Again, it's not a uh, attack on you. It's just them trying to help you get the work and get it to the best quality that it can be. Second is that you are going to document and categorize the feedback. So no longer is it just to say, oh, I see the feedback and I'm going to try to respond. No, you're going to document and you're going to categorize it. And I would say categorize it by section. That way it's easier to see by section and by reviewer. So you might say theoretical framework section and you can see, oh, reviewer one said this, you know, reviewer two, or, you know, in this case, your chair, committee member A, committee member B, start categorizing it because then you can see the trends and then you can start recognizing like, hey, if I address one of these issues raised by one of the people, I will address everybody else's comment. It'll make your life much easier. And then once you get that inconsistent feedback that clashes, you are no longer going to hold on to it. You're actually going to ask clarifying questions to your chair and committee. Again, the way you ask that question is, hey, I recognize that I got feedback from both of you all. Professor A, you said this. Professor B, you said this. I can't really achieve both of them. How would you all like for me to address them? That way we can have the best of both worlds. What would you all suggest? You want to put the back, put this thing back in their plate for them to th deal with and, and figure out oh, what they want to do with you. And they may, when you have this conversation, they may just say, hey, let us come back to you. That's fine. You want them to do all that part so they come back to you with what you should do. So once you know what you can do, feedback is a lot easier to do once you actually know how to apply and what you have to do. Um, in order to address what they're asking you. I know for a lot of folks in their DOT program, this part is very challenging dealing with feedback. This is something that we spend a lot of time with our clients in the Velocity Coaching Program dealing with because we just know that feedback, sometimes it can be sometimes not enough of it. And sometimes it's like you feel like you might have to be a mind reader. And the great thing about having support and coaches like us is that we actually take the mind reading part out for you and we actually show you and tell you what folks are thinking and what they're trying to get you to do when they're suggesting particular feedback and how you should respond to that feedback in order to get you the optimal result of, you know, getting to your proposal or your final defense. And if that's something that you want to learn more about and you want to get more support around how to deal with feedback and get feedback on your own work from our coaches so that by the time you get it to us and then you get it, you know, turn our feedback around and you turn it into your chair, it will be in great condition where the feedback you're going to get is very clear and not all over the place. So if that's something that you would like to do and you need that extra support, I would welcome you to schedule a consultation call. It's completely complimentary. You can go to www.velocitydissertation.com or you can scan a QR code that is down on your screen to learn more about what we do in the Dunn Dissertation Velocity Coaching Program. With that said, I want to say thank you so much for watching this episode from ABD to PhD Show. If you have liked today's episode, I have one ask from you. If you're a doc student and you need help, make sure you scan the QR code and learn more about our program. But if not, and for those of you who do do that as well, I would really ask for you, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. 
we are on a goal to reach a thousand subscribers. We are around 830 or so. And so it would really be extremely helpful if you hit the subscribe button so that we can get to our goal of reaching a thousand. The goal is to help we reach that before the year is over. And if you're watching this on LinkedIn or Facebook or somewhere else, make sure that you hit the follow button because we want to stay connected with you all and um, you know make sure that we get the support that you all need to finish the process. And we found that from our content that over 80% of people who watch the video, these videos and share them are actually not followers or subscribers or ours. So they would do us a great service if you all could become subscribers so that you know when our content uh, comes out fresh. And so with that, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for watching today's episode from ABD to PhD show. Again, my name is Dr. Ramon Goings, founder of Dunn Dissertation. And until next time, I wish you all a Dunn Dissertation. Take care.